1952 to amendment number 3956. On page one of the amendment, strike line three and all that follows. President, I ask unanimous consent that we dispense with further reading of the Without bill. objection, so ordered. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is a second degree amendment to the Landrew Isaacson Amendment. Uh, the, it is not a competing amendment. It is a, an amendment to add additional provisions. Uh, I support the material in the Landrew Isaacson Amendment, which deals with the, the uh, home real estate mar mortgage market. Uh, this amendment adds further provisions in the same section of the bill to deal with risk retention issues relating to the commercial real estate market and other uh, asset classes. According to market analysts and financial regulators, the provisions aimed at the securitized credit market in this bill will undoubtedly impact the access for credit for millions of American consumers and businesses. The reforms are aimed at the residential and subprime market and I'm quite concerned that they have not been carefully examined for all other markets. Additionally, they have not been reviewed in the context of other moving parts outside the bill, such as changing accounting standards and capital requirements and other regulatory mandates. When combined, these significant changes create a huge amount of uncertainty in the market, which today serves as one of the greatest impediments to new and private lending and investing. The stakes are high. As Treasury Secretary Geithner has stressed, no financial recovery plan will be successful unless it helps restart securitization markets for sound loans made to consumers and businesses, large and small. Yet the totality of regulatory and accounting changes impact the future viability of these markets. In fact, both market participants and financial regulators agree that the outcome is unclear in the short term and the long term. The warning signs are there and cannot be ignored after comments by the Fed, the OCC, the FDIC, and the International Monetary Fund, among others. As such, we must very carefully examine any new mandates to determine the most appropriate and direct way to strengthen our lending markets and to better serve consumers and businesses while avoiding negative complications. Such reforms are very important and it's critical that we get them right. This middle ground approach has two basic components. First, because skin in the game is important and can come in many forms, the proposed language improves the existing framework using the current language and construct in the Dodd Bill. And it requires the regulators to examine and consider equally which method of skin in the game is most appropriate. A percentage retention, underwriting standards, strong standardized and disclosed representations and warranties, other methods such as the third party retention for commercial backed mortgage securities uh, in the Minnick Bean Amendment that was passed in the House unanimously, or the like. Second, it clarifies existing language in the bill that requires reforms to be considered by asset class. Under the Landrieu Amendment, the regulators shall create the qualified mortgage framework important to the residential market. Under this amendment, the regulators shall consider the appropriate forms of retention by asset class and type of loan as well as risk profile associated with it. This would include allowing regulators to consider using and strengthening a third party retention framework that is important to commercial mortgage backed securities and the commercial real estate market participants. Ultimately, we think such an overall amendment is important because it comprehensively at addresses all asset classes and helps us to have a better format for approaching risk retention. What the amendment does is take the exclusive focus off of just one form of risk retention and allows the regulator to evaluate the best approach to address risk retention by asset class. This still includes a percent retention if necessary as well as underwriting standards that actually get at the heart of loans, and even strong and uniform representations and warranties, which are important to the investors, such as pension funds, mutual funds, and endowments, who fuel the lending and securitized credit markets. The amendment simply gives important direction to the regulators on structuring reforms by asset class. This is critical in the context of conflicting rules and, propose, and proposals aimed at these markets some of which prejudge or disregard the House and Senate language in this area. Most important, when taken with the Landrieu Amendment, it would address and encourage well-underwritten loans 
including qualified mortgage framework loans as included in the Landrieu Amendment, as well as the uniqueness of very different markets from the residential markets, such as commercial real estate, auto loans, student loans, and et cetera. And by avoiding a single asset carve-out for just residential, it simply allows the regulators to customize the skin-in-the-game rules for all asset classes, particularly ones that were not a root cause of the systemic risk we recently faced. This protects consumers and businesses that are struggling today to get access to credit. Without reinventing the wheel on the Dodd bill, this approach uses the Dodd structure to provide important reforms while avoiding negative complications on capital, liquidity, and credit availability, particularly in the, in the commercial real estate market, which faces challenges and has a very different structure. Such an approach is crucial for business and consumer credit and for overall economic recovery. And for that reason, it is supported by lenders of all sizes in all markets. Commercial borrowers who have been active on this issue, investors who fuel lending and are seeking certainty and confidence, and others. Lastly, some of the language in this bill, particularly related to the commercial mortgage market, passed the House Financial Services unanimously, as offered by Representatives Minnick, Bean, Adler, Moore, Campbell, and Miller. I urge all of my colleagues to accept this amendment as an addition to the Landrieu Isaacson Amendment, not as a change of it, to help us address more than simply the issues dealing with the residential, commercial, residential real estate market, but also, and most importantly, the commercial real estate market and other asset classes. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator from Connecticut is recognized. Mr. President, first of all, let me, uh, let me acknowledge the contribution.